Hey everyone, it's Tracy Mode. Um, I wanted to come pop on here real quick and do a quick video of a little bit about brushes. Um, so first of all, I wanted to show you not necessarily the brushes in here, but the little holder I have. It's from Westridge Designed um, in Portland, Oregon. And this is a great little case for traveling, for holding your brushes, and for going outdoor painting uh, in plein air. It folds up nice and flat with a Velcro closure. And when you are ready to paint with it, it folds in half this way. And there's a little uh, string here, a thick string with a little ball here that you tighten up and then it'll stand upright which is really cool. I store my brushes in that that I'm not using so much. Um, but the brushes you see here are brushes that I've collected over probably the last 30 years and I just have to say that I use only a handful of these. I'm, I could hold them all in one hand the brushes that I use. A lot of these I purchased um, at workshops. Not a lot, I mean, not all of them, but I purchased them at workshops and they had a purpose and a place at the time and I did use them for um, a lot of my paintings, but I don't anymore. They're kind of set aside in a drawer um, in my art cabinet. But I just wanted to show you <clears throat> how many I have versus how many I use. And that is, um, this rubber band doesn't belong in there, but I just say that because you don't need a whole lot of brushes. You don't need um, to get the best natural hair, Kalinsky or squirrel or goat or whatever it may be. You can get a handful of brushes that are super good synthetic or synthetic blend and do really great. Those are the brushes that I use most of the time. Some of these bigger guys I'll use if I'm uh, working on a bigger sheet of paper. And that uh, you can really get a visual of how that looks. If I were try to try to paint a big wash of color in with this little tiny brush, it wouldn't work so well. Um, but if I were going for a bigger brush, I would be able to fill a lot more space with that one brush. So <clears throat> that's, I mean, it is important to have some bigger brushes if you're planning on doing some bigger paintings. But for the most part, the brushes that I use are represented with just a few. And I'll grab those real quick and show you which one. Some of these I have multiple of the same size laid out here, so I'm not gonna grab those. But I do have um, a few that I wanna show you that you might wanna try out, because they're fairly inexpensive and they work really well. I do have a short-handled Utrecht, and this is a Sablet, it's a um, synthetic. Works really well, I have a couple of different a few different sizes in that. I have um, a number six, a number eight, a number 10, a number one, just a variety of sizes on that. And then these guys here are Escoda Prado. It's a um, Alvaro Castanese brush collection. And I really love those. Nice long handle, which uh, I, I can come down on that handle and, and hold it comfortably and that keeps my paintings a little bit looser. So I have three of those and then I've got a little flat. This is a 3 8 of an inch flat that I really like for some straight line work and scrubby little trees and dry brush work I can do with this guy. And then these two are my most recent purchases which I absolutely love because they hold a ton of paint and water. They keep my paintings really loose and fresh. Um, they cover a lot of area too. So this brush, when it's full of paint and water, I can just cover this whole paper super quickly. And this is a dagger striper here. It's by Princeton. It's a Neptune, 3 8 of an inch dagger striper. I love that because it's 
uh, comes to a tip and I can do some really fun little line work with that. This is an Escoda Versatile number 10 rigger and it really holds a lot of paint and water and comes to a super nice tip too. So I can do very fine lines with it or I can cover a big area of space. So those are, that's a little rundown of the brushes that I have and the ones that I don't use so much and the ones that I use all the time. It's an, oh, and I forgot to mention these. I don't use that one actually, but I do use the Winsor & Newton uh, Bright. It's a number two. And I like to have a stiff bristle brush, um, maybe for, that's meant for um, oil painting, uh, to do some lifting, to lift out highlights and that kind of thing. So this is really, a, this is one brush that I always use, always, always, always. Um, then I do have several other rigger brushes that I use a lot. Um, I've had them for a long time and they sat kind of all by themselves getting lonely. And then when I got these two, uh, rigger and the dagger, I pulled out my other rigger brushes that I have. So you'll see them called liner. This is, this says liner on it. Um, this doesn't even say anything, but you can tell by the long, um, bristles of these brushes that they're, uh, more of a rigger or a liner and they are not meant to give you a lot of control they're meant to be really loose so you can do some squiggly lines and calligraphy type marks with these brushes and it keeps it really fun and loose so I hope that helps that's a rundown on brushes and like I said you don't need to spend a ton of money you don't need to get a whole bunch of different brushes. Just get a handful of some that will cover the basics and you should be good to go. But hey, I'm not going to stop you if you want to go out and spend money on on art supplies. It's always fun and I feel like that's, um, it's kind of like people that uh, shop for, for fun. Um, clothing, you know, go out clothing shopping. I go shopping for brushes. I go shopping for paint. I don't usually go to the, to the clothing store. Probably should more, but I don't. I go to the art supply store. So, all right. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll do some brush work in another video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.